Hello, Die Collectors. Today we have a special video on Todd had a fragment on the original PlayStation 2. For those of you who don't know, Die Hack Fragment was a follow-up to Die Hack Confection, Mutation, Outbreak, and Quarantine as an online uh, game where you make your own custom characters that was not Kite, uh, but most of the assets were based off of other characters uh, from the games and from the anime Die Hack sign uh, that you can change the colors, the height, the weight, and um, you can level up your own character, name them whatever you want, and play with up to three people, uh, yourself and two others, to go online and play together anywhere in the world. Um, now this uh, service that CC2 and Bandai was running ran from November 2005 and was planned to end on November 2006 because of the popularity of this game, however, it was extended to January 2007, uh, but they had to close the game regardless because they didn't want it to um, conflict with the release of .hack GU. And so the game was shut down, and from that point on to today, uh, CC2 and Bandai Namco uh, no longer support the game online. So, with the ingenuity of the fans, Team Coldbird, back in 2013, reverse engineered the lobby server. And that is the server that you would pop this game into your console, connect online with the network adapter, one of these little devices here, and um, hooked up to your Ethernet LAN cable, to your router, to your modem, and would connect online uh, to Japan. And you would be in a lobby server that gave you access to a list of area servers that people were hosting, as well as the BBS, the mailer, the guilds, the guild shops, and player rankings based off of different attributes, uh, such as level, health, and GP. Now, this game, however, was only available in the region for NTSC-J. If you're not familiar with back in those times, games were region locked, meaning this game, you pop in that tray right there on this North American NTSC-UC console, you would get the red screen of death. Now, the only way to circumvent that would mean you would have to get a console that was NTSC-J, basically a Japanese PlayStation 2. Now, this would obviously run the game just fine. However, a couple of problems arise. Number one is the prongs. This uh, uses the standard little connection that you would normally see on a regular PS2. Uh, but the voltage is also going to be different. And this is intended to run at 100 volts, whereas the North American consoles are intended to run at 120 volts. And so, technically, you could just plug a um, North American uh, plug into the Japanese console, and 9 out of 10 times, it shouldn't be a problem. You shouldn't be able to fry it. It should be well within the range and margin error of the different voltage. However, if you were to use a PAL region uh, power cord, which is, I believe, 220, that would probably short something inside the console. So you definitely don't want to do that. So in order to play this game in North America, the best way to do that would be to take this game, put it in your computer, make a disc copy of it, and then using a free McBoot memory card, plug it in your console, put the game disc image on a USB, and you can go right ahead, launch your console like normal, and you'll be using a program called OPL, which stands for Open PlayStation Loader. What that does is 
it takes disk images that are on USB and plays them, regardless of region. Now your options are either to buy a free McBoot memory card off of eBay or Amazon, or in my case, you can make your own. Very easy, very simple. The only problem is, um, in order to get started, you can't really use a FAT model, and that's all related to the DVD player version. It has to be a later version, which didn't come out into the slim models here. Now this slim model I believe is 1.3, which is what's needed to run free DVD boot, which will give you access to install free memory card boot onto a memory card. Um, like I said, FATS can't do it, but once you make a free boot memory card, you can pop this in into any console of your choosing and it, it works fine. But like I said, to get the start process, you kind of have to use the DVD player that was only available on the slim models. All of them, such as the 70001, the 77001, but will not work, as far as I'm told, on the one that has the little glossy bottom right down here. This is 90001. Uh, the DVD player will not work um, to exploit it. So for today, we are going to use my 70001 with this blank memory card that has no data on it. We are going to use this DVD-R. It has to be a DVD-R or plus or minus, doesn't matter, but you cannot use an RW. We are going to pop this disc in. If you go to GitHub and you look up free DVD boot, you'll get a five megabyte um, disk image. Burn it to the DVD R, pop it in your player, and you'll be able to get access to U Launch Elf. So let's make a free DVD to memory card boot disk. So let's turn the power off here. Let's get some video. Some power. Controller. Now, on my USB here, I have the files uh, for copying over to the memory card. These are from, I don't believe it, it might be GitHub, but I think it might be one of the PlayStation forums, uh, the Free McBoot Newbie Pack, which has a bunch of apps that are preloaded onto the free memory card boot. We're just going to plug that in to one of the available USB ports. So we got the blank memory card, the free DVD boot exploit disk, we're going to power that on. So because the free DVD boot um, DVD is in there, we go straight to you launch elf. Now let's say I do that again with no disc inside. I would just go straight to the normal uh, PS2 browser here. And because this is not a free uh, memory card boot memory card, I don't see a custom loading page. And when I go view the memory card, just has the system configuration, which I can just go and delete anyways. So there is no data. And if you're not familiar, USBs cannot be read without special software. 
That's what the free McBoot uh, memory card is going to do for us. So to get started, run the DVD. So we got file browser, press zero. We are going to go to see MC0 and MC1, that's memory card one and memory card two. HDD is hard drive, which the Slim does not have hard drives. Uh, I don't remember what that is, but we're going to go to MAS, which stands for uh, Mass Storage Device. So we're going to select that with circle. We're going to go down to the free McBoot um, folder here. And we are going to click on free McBoot installer.elf. So we have this main menu here. Um, if you notice very faintly, it says right over there, R1. We're going to have different menus we're going to be navigating across. So let's see here. Install free McBoot for this console. If I hit R1, we got install free McBoot for PlayStation 1. And we have format memory card, dump memory card, or restore memory card. Just play it safe. We're going to format the memory card one more time. And now it's, instead of circle being OK, it's X is OK. The memory card in slot 1 will be formatted. Continue. Yes. And now we're formatting our memory card. It's clean. There's nothing on it. We're going to hit circle to go back. Oops. Actually, we're just going to hit... Uh, the triggers on top. Okay. So we have install, multi install, uninstall, uninstall, and exit. I believe I can go to install. Oops. Uh, free memory card boot will be installed on this memory card slot one. Continue, yes or no. Um, if I do this option, this memory card, free McBoot, will only work on this specific console. If we want to take this memory out and pop it into whichever console we want at any time, we are going to be using multi-install. While using multi-install, it tells you that sometimes it could have problems. They recommend you do normal install. Cancel or OK. Uh, will be installed onto memory card. Continue, yes or no. Actually, it might be normal. Okay, sorry. Don't do multi-install, do the normal one. So we have normal, cross-regional, cross-model. Normal will be for this console only. Cross-regional will mean the memory card can work on the North American ones and the Japanese one. Cross-model means it can work between fat and slim. We're gonna do cross-model. So while this um, installs, um, basically you can take this disc, pop it into your computer, and what you can do is use a program called ImageBurn, make a disc image of this game, and put it on your PC, and on the USB down here, what you can do is make a folder called DVD. You can put that disc image, and you can put it onto that folder on this um, USB stick here, and the USB stick must be formatted in FAT32. Do not use any other uh, format options for the USB. So the disk image in the DVD folder will pull up in OPL, which is a program we're gonna use soon. Um, alternatively, if you do it that way, this will still be in Japanese and it will still connect to the old CC2 uh, lobby server. But if you want to play online and in English, you want to use a patch uh, made by Vector and Telium that will patch the disk image that you copied from ImageBurn and make it into English and be able to connect to the lobby server. So Freeman Boot is now on this memory card. So we exit, quit the program. And we no longer need this DVD anymore. We are done with that. So 
So here we are. We have Free McBoot version 1966. So just like a standard PS2, you have browser and system configuration. That hasn't changed. Let's go to browser and let's see what it installed. So now on my memory card, I have apps, boot, system config, and free McBoot. So these are all now on there, on the memory card, not your console. Your console is not modded whatsoever. This is considered a soft mod still. So like, for example, I turn the power off, take the memory card out, turn the power back on. It's still your normal PS2, unchanged, unmodified. Just has the basic browser system configuration. Nothing else. When I add this in, turn the power on. Now it's a free McBoot. So the option you want to go down to is called Open PlayStation Loader, OPL. Open PS2 Loader version 1436. We're going to select that one. So we come to the main menu. The very bottom, you'll see over there that says Gameless if you hit Circle. However, nothing's configured, so when I hit circle, nothing happens. What you're going to want to do is you're going to go to settings. You want to come down to check USB game fragmentation on. Turn that to off. USB device start mode says off. We're going to put that to auto. And that's it. That's all we need to do. If you're using the fat PlayStation and you have the hard drive installed, and you have free HD boot instead of free uh, memory card boot, you can turn this on and you can put games on the hard drive on the fat PS2. Or, if you wanted, you can share a folder on your Windows PC that's on the network, and you can do Ethernet device start, and this will pull games from SMB. Um, if you're unfamiliar with that, SMB is basically you're going to leave the files on your PC and it's going to stream the game data onto the console's RAM as it's needed and play the games. However, it's a one-way tunnel. So if you play your games from the Ethernet, SMB, you cannot play Fragment Online because now it can't send data. It's only pulling data. So if you want to play Fragment Online, it has to be on a USB drive. So, check USB fragmentation is off. USB device start is on auto. We are going to go back. Actually, we're going to go down to the corner and hit OK. Then we're going to go to Save Changes. Setting save to memory card 0. And 0 is memory card 1. Memory card 1 would be memory card 2. So, now that the settings are saved, now we can hit circle, game list, and it says down at the very bottom, USB. The other three would be um, Ethernet, hard drive, and apps. Uh, since we got nothing else but this game on that USB, that's the only thing that's going to be showing up right there. And that is the uh, game code for the game here, which is 255, oops. 25527, which you see on the screen. So we're going to hit X to run. Now at this point, you can connect. Your Ethernet cable here onto your console. That way we can get access to playing the game online. Uh, but first, we have to configure our Ethernet connection onto this memory card. There is no setting save at the moment. And voila, 
we have dot hack fragments running on the USB on my PS2 console here. You can play in offline mode if you don't have an Ethernet connection or if you did not patch this game um, to connect to the new lobby server, you can play offline just fine. Your character from offline and online is one and the same, so you can transfer your character in between. Uh, so you can get a head start in offline mode, and I strongly recommend you do start in offline mode because it's the only way to get data drain. It is in the tutorial on offline mode only. There is no tutorial on the online mode, and so you will not have access to data drain unless you complete the tutorial. I believe it's the, um, the second chapter when you uh, encounter Mia. She will take you to a field and you will fight some monsters and she will give you data drain. But we're going to go to online. Oh, and now it's circles. Okay. So right now we have no network configuration. We are going to set that up right now. When you come to the game, you have three options. So we never saved a game before on this memory card, so we're going to make a file on memory card one. A little bit there, still not translated, and I've uh, patched this game this morning. So memory, oops, turtle. Translations has come a long way in the last six months. I mean... From 2013, when Team Coldbird had started, up until when they disbanded in 2016, um, there was basic um, translations for the. I gotta get used to this X and O. Basic translations just for menus, but a lot of the game is now translated, uh, thanks to Telium, and thanks for to Vector for making a patch program for that. For the purposes today, we're just going to use the Diahack Fragment uh, network setup. There we go. Um, that's included in the disk. Alternatively, if you wanted, not necessarily, you could be using the uh, network adapter disk that came with the network devices. These guys. Um, there are many different versions that all do the same thing, including the one that's on the in the game itself. So, by default, I do not have access to connect or select. I can only go to edit. This will, like I said, take me into a setup similar to the ones you'd find on the network disk. So we're gonna select that. we go so you have add setting edit setting delete setting test connection we're gonna go circle for add circle for memory card one we're gonna use the right button select Ethernet let's circle hit the right button we're gonna choose not required for ID or password hit circle hit right we're gonna do auto for uh, IP address hit right so we're gonna do auto for a DNS server hit right setting just leave it for setting one as the name and hit right so we're going to save all this information hit circle to begin and it's saving the information to the memory card i'm not sure if it connects the console id or the mac address to this ethernet um, connection whatever your um, next available spot is on the router Save as completed, okay. You want to test the connection? Sure, why not? Yes. Hit circle to begin. Connection is being tested. And I don't think this actually does anything because I did the test connection without the 
Ethernet actually connected and it still said it was successful. So regardless, we're gonna hit okay. So from here, we're back to the main menu. We're gonna hit X to go out and we're gonna quit. There is a uh, early release version of this game. It does not have an offline mode. It's just strictly online. And that version connects um, to the old server as well. But um, there is a patch that you can use that will allow you to connect to the uh, server we're about to connect to right now, but it won't be in English. And you have limited character customization options. So. If you just want to look at it, it's on archive.org just to see what was missing, what was changed. Uh, for here, connect is still grayed out. We're going to do select. We're going to choose memory card one, number one. And now connect has available for us to uh, select. Hit circle. If you want to cancel, hit the X button. And if you get to this point here where you see your desktop you are online congratulations you have made it to NetSlums. NetSlums is a server hosted by alkaline uh, who has the lobby server running uh, thanks to team colbert um, also thanks to zach zach mon had finished where colbert had left off on the bbs mailer guilds and rankings uh, Zachmon had made a um, a repository from the original lobby server emulator and completed that within the last six months. Very amazing job for Team Netslum with Alkaline as our host. Zachman keeping things um, up to date in terms of the uh, lobby server and Telium and Vector for continuing to make the English patching available to all of you. So, hit the any button, go up to the world. Since this is a new game, new character, or new memory card, we have to make our own character. You have three slots per memory card for characters. Tab one, two, three at the very top. Just hit the left button. We're gonna make a character on number one. Create a new character, okay. So you have six classes, Twin Blade, Blade Master, Heavy Blade, Heavy Axe, Long Arm, Wave Master. Whatever you want to make. We're going to do Wave Master. Type refers to their appearance, not their colors. Colors is down below, such as height and width as well. So these are some of the characters you may know, such as Wiseman, and you have some uh, NPC characters. So this looks like BT. And if you change the color, you can make it BT from Diac Sign. So this one looks like Mistral. If you change the right color, I think it's blue. It'll look like Mistral. Height, you got tall, normal, and tiny. And for width, you have normal, large, and skinny. So whatever you decide, hit OK. And then you have 99 points to distribute amongst all these stats. Uh, depending on what class you are, such as if you're a Wave Master, you might want to put all that to Magic Accuracy. If you're a Blade Master or Twin Blade, you might want to put it all into um, Physical Accuracy. Accuracy at an early start is very important compared to their stats. So if you want to actually hit any monsters, put everything into accuracy. All your stats will eventually level up as you play the game. So let's say like that, for example. Hit OK. Now you can enter a name. And I do not have a keyboard. 
if you pop a keyboard into the uh, other USB port, you can start typing this out. Otherwise, ugh, I have to use this. Which is not fun to type. Um, if you're talking to people in game. Yeah, I don't think I can spell Mahomey. Hmm. Yeah, that's good enough. Is your name correct? Okay or cancel? This is your character. Is this all right? Yes. Choose a different class. Redistribute points. So now we're saving our character to the memory card. Uh, one major thing I should note while playing online and also offline, make sure you exit the game properly. If you do not, you will lose levels and items as a consequence. So. Here we are on the world. You have your options for lobby server, guilds, BBS, rankings, and quit. If you go to guilds, here you can see a list of guilds, shops of items being sold by guilds, your guild or create a guild. In order to create a guild, you have to play the game and you have to find a guild emblem. On here it says guild key, but in the original game it's guild emblem. And that is a random chance you can find by defeating certain monsters. So have fun with that. Also, I think it was monsters. It might be just got statues. Either way, you get to play a lot and your chances are pretty low. Or if you get lucky, you get on the first try. Who knows? Select guild lists, all guild lists. And then they have a bunch of guilds here that you can uh, look into and join. Shop list will have uh, different items sold by the guilds. And I believe you can sell the guild emblem, guild key to start your own guild from the guild shop. So if you want to farm a bunch of them and sell them for one GP, by all means, I'm sure someone will appreciate you. So that was guilds. Let's go to bulletin board system, EBS. Here you can leave little messages um, for people to read. Uh, one thing to note, however, when you make a reply, you have to change the title by one character. So here's the BBS. We're reading a topic called Welcome to the BBS. Zach Mann, the one who actually um, got the BBS reverse engineered, was the very first person to post something on October 22nd, 2020 of last year. So he got up to work, thankfully. Uh, Alkaline is the one that um, hosts the whole lobby server where all this is stored on. R.L. Stein was one of the um, other PlayStation 2 enthusiasts who um, helped uh, get people to play on the PlayStation 2. And many other people, part of the Netsum community, um, all this would not be possible so for example find a message you want to reply down at the very bottom it says press the square button to reply and you'll notice every message here is slightly different from the title 
because you have to change the title by one character before you write your message. If you leave the title exactly as it is, your message will not go through. It has to be different. Confusing, but after a while get used to it. And if you have a real keyboard, even better. Do not type on the controller. Not sure if ranking's working. Let's see here. Okay, so uh, you can view top players by level, HP, SP, GP, um, online statues completed, offline statues completed, how much gold coins. Now this is a key item, I believe. Silver coins, bronze coins. So you can sort by classes. So you want to see the highest level long arm. Number one is this person's name in Japanese. I cannot read. They are level 99. Oh, there's a familiar face. Grump old guy. Um, one of the weekly fragment players is a grumpy old gamer. I believe this might be one of his characters. Yep, there he is. A G G or A G O G G. So yeah, be sure to check out his videos every Friday mornings. So all this is on. Um, Aka Lime's lobby server to actually play with people you're going to be going to the lobby server and you're going to see a list of individuals who are hosting a game you have one choice the main lobby hit circle this is a very important message and you'll only see it this one time when you first start online after this point you will never see this message ever again you just have to remember press the triangle button to open the area server list because this is kind of a chat room that you're in. If there are people in the chat room, you'd be seeing their names right there. And then you'd see a list of messages that they've typed. So for example, let's see. See, there's someone who logged on. So it has an automated message that says join the room, their uh, character name, and then a list of everyone is online. So the first thing you want to choose is area server list. This will give you a list of all the current servers hosted on, uh, I believe, only Windows machines, unless you're emulating Windows on Mac or Linux. So you have the server levels right here on the left, the server names, and how many people are online. If it says three, you cannot access this uh, server. This one says one, so we can join that person and we'll be a party of two instantly. Any ones that say zero, you'll be on your own. The servers are listed based on who logged on first. So crab server, was the last most oldest logged in right now in terms of area servers and this one down here sleep enthusiast is the most recent one that went online now if you shut your computer off or shut the program off your server will be removed from the list but if you leave your computer on that's hosting the server your name will be up here and eventually would probably float to the top assuming other people you know shut their server down or turn the computer off so we're going to go to macro server Macro is a level 26 server. What that means is um, every server starts as level one. The more people play on your server, the more your server levels up. So characters level up and servers level up. So level 99 is the highest a character and a server can be leveled up to. So Crab Server, Hong, University Station are both level 99. They are not gonna get any higher than that. What these levels uh, entail means is the fields and monsters, that's the highest level they're going to be. So if you go to this level 5 server, you're going to be running into a bunch of level 5 uh, fields and dungeons. If I go to this level 26 server here, I'm going to be running up to, up to level 26 uh, fields, areas, and dungeons and monsters. I can still run into level 1 uh, monsters, but 
26 is going to be the cap. So now we're on Mackerel server. Holy Mackerel. So this is the root town that the server has selected. Uh, the server owners can choose which root town they want. Macanoo, Don Moriag, Carmenia, Gadalica, uh, Fort Oof, and Leo Fall. Those are the five servers you can choose for your server. Um, you'll have to shut your server down if you want to switch servers, I believe. It's been a while. Anywho, when I push the left and right top triggers, I can bring up the maps, both on the root towns and also in the fields. And if I use the right stick, I can zoom in on my character. If I hit triangle, I can get my menu here. If there's anyone on the server, I can go to friends list online. And I can see my friends. If you want to give your member address to someone, you go to card and hit send card. But it's only the people that you see on the root towns. Shortcuts is a very helpful feature. You can assign um, items or skills to a shortcut. So that way when you're playing, you can quickly push a button to do a certain skill you want. Gear is what you're currently equipped with, such as weapon, head, body, hand, feet. Status shows you everything about your character. Um, I'm level one, since it's a brand new character. My experience is zero out of a thousand. Every level is a thousand experience, so it doesn't um, grow uh, per level. So for example, level two is not gonna be 2,500 experience to level up. Level three is not gonna be, you know, 4,000 experience to level up and level 99 is not gonna be 1 million experience points to level up. However, um, monsters will only give experience uh, the closer they are to your level or higher. If you start fighting monsters that are weaker than you, you're gonna get one or zero experience points. So bear that in mind. You're gonna wanna change your equipment, join parties, and uh, assign some shortcuts and get some items to revive because it's going to be a long journey to uh, level 99. Discard items, you have your key items. Since it's a new character, I have nothing. I have no event items, no grunty foods, no virus cores. Uh, one of the useful items is the Book of a Thousand, which will let you see what uh, certain monsters will drop and where certain items can be found So if you're trying to hunt down virus cores or like the guild emblem, you're gonna find all that information there Your items are capped at 40 So you can only carry 40 items on your character. You can hold 99 items at the um, The uh, warehouse I believe it's The one with the elf face now if a root town has an event right next to the chaos gate you're gonna see an NPC just standing there so yeah here we can store items up to 99 items withdraw items <clears throat> so yeah if there was an event which I was on macro earlier today and there was a character standing right here the character was standing here, so when I logged on, I saw him just standing right over there. It's just an NPC. You walk up to him, interact with him, and he'll tell you about an event at a certain field. And events are randomly generated. We are still uncertain what actually um, triggers the events to happen. We know it's on the lot, um, area server. The individual area server triggers the events somehow. So... Three players can come to this root town, talk to the NPC, go to the field, and complete the dungeon and get the uh, event item from that um, event sequence chain. But again, we still don't know how it happens, but if you start a new area server, nine out of ten times, you're going to skip the New Year's event. So the game assumes New Year's is when you start your area server, but oftentimes we even see like the spring event happen on the day it's supposed to happen 
or the Valentine's event happened on the Valentine's Day, regardless of when the server was started. So it's hit or miss, and not all servers have it, and not all servers have it at the same time. Uh, we believe the trigger is every 15 minutes it can happen. So if you don't see an event from NPC, you might want to hop off this server and try another server. And you can raise Grunties, and you can race Grunties, uh, but you're going to need some uh, Grunty foods, and you also need to level up some more. And you may need to play the offline mode. I forget what triggers the Grunties. But you can raise Grunties. So you come to the Chaos Gate here, hit Circle, new keyword, choose some keywords that the area server host has selected. These are the default ones. Wait, no. Uh, the default ones are usually the same, but you can change them or erase them. So, Golden Holy Mackerel, the server um, owner made it hold Golden Holy Mackerel here, which is a higher level than it's supposed to be. Hmm. Anyway, answer the server. You can make custom dungeons too that have um, different messages, different routes. If you use the uh, dungeon editor on the area server program, if I hit left and right top triggers, I can zoom out of the maps. I can see where the dungeon is, which means it's going to be that way. If I have a fairy orb, it will give me information about the map such as all those golden dots are monsters which I'm not going to go to because I'm going to die on a level 46 server with a level 1 character gate out to return to town to make sure you don't lose levels or items make sure you exit the game properly so we're back at through town hit triangle log out okay to quit from here we're gonna hit start tile screen um, but real quick I go back to the world it's gonna do the character selection If you logged out inappropriately, right underneath where it says class, you'll get a message in red that says you did not log out properly and what it's going to penalize you for. But apparently we logged out fine, so no harm, no foul. Title screen. And that was Plain Dot Hack Fragment Online on a PS2 Slim. But can we do it on a PS2 fat? Check out the USB, check out the memory card, check out the controller, power, video. PlayStation loader, OPO. Game list, Dot fragment. So 
So once again, a lot of people contributed to making this happen. Um, some people are still helping the community. Um, others have washed their hands and walked away from the project. Um, obviously CC2 and Bandai for one, making this game at all. Unfortunately, I never saw a PAL or North America release. Uh, thankfully, that has not stopped people from attempting to play the game. Uh, so, Colbert team with uh, Robert Colbert himself, um, NC Dyson, Warranty Voider, Beldana, Moogie, and there were so many more who joined the team uh, at Team Colbert. Um, unfortunately, the team is no longer working together. They've moved on to other projects uh, since then, since 2016. Uh, but now with the uh, Netslums uh, community, such as Alkaline, Zachmon, Tellium, Vector, Venus, uh, One Up, and many others who are still contributing to this day, um, just helping people get started. You know, thank you, thank you for helping everyone. Uh, since this is a new console, um, same memory card. The memory card remembers the last console. So what we have to do is we're going to have to go and erase that configuration. But yeah, thanks to all the communities uh, who started it, who are still with us today, and the ones in between. Uh, hopefully we can get more people to play, so that way we can see a lot more characters on the ranking boards. So I'm going to delete um, the last one. Which is fine. So... We're going to add a network configuration to this memory card. So definitely spread the word out there to your friends, uh, people on the internet, um, people who you think might have an interest in playing the original Dahak Infection Mutation Outbreak Quarantine game online with uh, other people. Uh, let them know about uh, Dahak Fragment is still available to play today um, as of March 2021. Uh, be sure to check my guide. Um, I did one last year for 2020. Um, that was a little bit much because I tried to cram everything into one guide, such as the area server, how to host them, um, before we had Telium make the um, Japanese to English translations. I did a whole setup on how to get to the game in Japanese, so that's no longer necessary. Um, we are going to select memory card one, connect using the configuration we just did on memory card one. Yeah, social media, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, Instagram, um, on streaming services such as YouTube, uh, Twitch, whatever is out there these days. Make some videos, uh, tell people, hey, this game is online. It's pretty fun when you get really into it, especially when you're trying to complete the Book of a Thousand. So here we have my character that I made on the PS2 Slim, on the PS2 Fat right now. So you can play Hack Fragment on any console right now, today. Whether you buy a 
memory card boot, um, memory card from eBay or Amazon, or if you make your own, if you have a PS2 Slim, that's not the uh, last model. Also, the other way to tell if you have the last model or not, let's say that the um, the label is worn out <clears throat> on the uh, Slim models, the power is different. On the model you can't use free DVD boot has this style that's on the PS2 fat if it's one of the ones that are compatible it has this power which has a little power block and because like I said this is a character that I've already used I did not get that little message that says Press the triangle button to see the list of uh, lobby servers, or um, area servers. And the bottom text doesn't mention that either, so you always have to remember to press the triangle button. And that'll get you access to the uh, area server list. So right now, one person's still on Sleep Enthusiast. Um, be sure to check out my YouTube channel, Dot Hack Network, where I talk about all the dot hack uh, games, animes, DVDs, books, uh, mangas, um, keychains, figures, all kinds of dot hack merchandise. I'm trying to build a big comprehensive list of everything, not just, you know, the Japanese version of dot hack fragments, but also rare oddities like the early release version. You can find all that on my YouTube videos and on our site, Dot Hack Network, over at dothack.org. Also, our Discord server, we have over 2,000 people, um, a big community of Dot Hack fans exclusively. Uh, probably the biggest one out there, and I like to see all you guys one day hop on over to the Fragment channel on our Discord server and get started and playing games with everyone else. We meet up on Fridays, regardless of time zone. So if you're on the East Coast, West Coast, you know, check out on Fridays, and hopefully this list right here will be filled with people to play with. Um, if you happen to be streaming, we welcome you to uh, announce your streams on our Discord server, or even tag us on social media when you do. If you're gonna play this game or any other Bell hack game, you know, just go ahead and leave a mention there and uh, we'll be sure to follow you and sub. And we'll check up on you on your progress in the game. And if you need help, ask the community and we'll be here to help you. And if you're pretty confident on playing, be sure to help out the next person. The more people learn how to play, better. We'll have a big community of people playing Dot Hack Fragment. Hey, look, this is Leofo. And no Grunties. Leave in the comment if you have any questions. I'll be sure to answer them when I get the chance. Until then, thanks for watching.